So, how does somebody crawl back in their mom and pop back out again? I don't know, but this guy named Jesus of Nazareth has something to say about that. Stay tuned. Welcome back to 90 and Out. I'm your host, Timothy Holt, and this channel's all about Jesus of Nazareth, Christianity, and the Christian Bible. So, uh, we're continuing our look at the words of Jesus, the speeches of Jesus, by looking at a short speech he gives to a guy named Nicodemus in Luke, or John chapter 3. If you want the speech in its entirety, you can check out the link provided. Also, you can check out the playlist, Speeches of Jesus, to look at the other speeches we've looked at on this channel, uh, the Sermon on the Plain, the Sermon on the Mount, and the Great Commission. All right, let's get right down to uh, business here, talking about this guy named Nicodemus. So, John, uh, in his biography, records this in chapter 3, and Nicodemus is a Pharisee. He's a member of the Sanhedrin court. We know, most of what we know about him comes from the three places he's mentioned in the Bible. He's mentioned here in chapter 3, he's mentioned later on in John, and then he's mentioned at the crucifixion as one of the two men who take Jesus' body off the cross and bury him. So, kind of an interesting figure, a little magnet, a mag mm -hmm. yeah, a dynamic. Uh, but... Interesting nonetheless. We know he was married, he was an older man, uh, and he had children. We know this because he was a member of the Sanhedrin court, which is a, or was, a Jewish court, civil and religious court. It's also the same court that sentenced Jesus uh, for blasphemy and charged him with blasphemy, sent, handing him over to the Romans for death. So. A uh, pretty powerful court, and it was uh, about 200 men, prominent men in Jewish society. Uh, we also know he was a ruler of some sort, because, well, it straight up says, quote, a ruler of the Jews, end quote. What that position exactly was, we don't know, but we just know he was a ruler of some kind, a uh, government official. So, it starts out with him coming to Jesus at night, and there's two main reasons he could have come at night. One, keep in mind, this is before electricity and the wonderful things like lights that's shining in my face right now. Um, meetings were common during the day. Most of the time, if you met someone at night, it was either because you were meeting them in secret, kind of working out a shady deal, um, you know, the, the seedier elements of society were active at night, um, or it was simply because the person you were meeting was so busy that there was no other time to meet. Uh, it's hard telling, based on Nicodemus and what we know about him, which of those two reasons he was using. Either Jesus was super busy and it was the only time available, which is, very, which is highly probable because he was a very active and busy man, very popular at this point in time, um, commanding large crowds, and people followed him everywhere. Or it was because Nicodemus, being a member of that Sanhedrin court that I mentioned, and being a prominent Pharisee, a ruler, a government official, didn't want very many people, if anybody, knowing he was meeting with this rabbi named Jesus of Nazareth. Because his teachings were a little radical. Okay, they were very radical. And uh, were causing some commotion with the Orthodox Jewish leaders, the traditionalists. Nicodemus starts the conversation with rabbi, which is a, another word for teacher or professor. It's a term of respect. The uh, Jewish people still have rabbis today, and they are highly respected in the Jewish community. We know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. In other words, you're doing all these crazy cool stuff, miracles and all kinds of stuff, and there is no way that you can do those unless, uh, you know, you got something supernatural going on. Well, 
Jesus said to him, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, a little bit about that born again. That is a uniquely Christian concept. Uh, no other religion that I know of in the world has the idea, concept of being born again like Christianity. Um, many of your Eastern religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, they have reincarnation, where you come back to life after you die in another life as another creature. Um, that is not what Christianity born again is. Um, even the Romans, the Greeks, um, the Asturians, and the other prominent religions of the Middle East and um, Mes uh, in the Mediterranean d had similar concepts to the Eastern religions of reincarnation or an afterlife in Hades, um, but not of being born again. So, Nicodemus answers Jesus with this concept of being born again uh, with what I find to be a hilarious response. Keep in mind he's an older guy. Okay, he's probably middle-aged or senior citizen. Um, and he's never heard of this concept before. So he says, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? I, I just picture this, this like grandpa looking fella going, yeah, what gives? Um, I'm an old guy. There is no way I'm crawling back up in my mom and popping back out again. What are you talking about? So Jesus explains this concept, and again, it's uniquely Christian. There, this concept does not exist in Jewish society at all, either. And he says, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now, that concept of the wind. Okay, there's an old DC talk song that has a guy talking. I didn't look it up. I probably should have, but um, it's a pretty cool song. Uh, however, the guy who talks, he says, you know, I can't, you can't see the wind, you see the effects of the wind, but you can't see the wind. And that's what Jesus is saying here. If you're born of flesh, we all have this disease. It's called humanity. You watching this video, me, we all have it. Every human has. We're narcissistic, selfish people that do some pretty horrible things to each other. If you don't believe that all humans are born narcissists, hang out with a newborn. Just hang out with a newborn for a couple hours, okay? They're narcissistic, all of them, all newborns, because it's all about them for survival. They cry and scream and whine and for everything. It's amazing. But as a human gets older, and they're taught by their parents and uh, other people who come in and out of their lives, hopefully we become less and less narcissistic. But Jesus is saying there's even more to it. There's a whole new birth, and it's this concept of being born in the spirit, because we're not just physical creatures. We're spiritual beings as well, and we're all spiritually dead without being born again, born of the spirit. Nicodemus is notably confused, and Jesus explains, We speak what we, have, we know, and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. In other words, he's saying, you know, the people following me, we see it. Even you, earlier, said I do cool things because God's with me. But you, you're not accepting what we're saying, what I'm, I'm teaching. And he says, if I've told you earthly things and you don't accept it, how are you going to believe heavenly things? In other words, if you see it 
and you don't accept what you see, then how can you accept something you can't see? And the answer is you can't. Your eyes have to be open. Okay? Then he goes into a, a description of his crucifixion, which is pretty interesting. He references Moses in the wilderness. Keep in mind we're talking Jewish history here. So Nicodemus would know exactly what Jesus was referring to. It's in Exodus if you want to check it out. Um, lifted up a serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, referring to the crucifixion. What follows is arguably the most well-known scripture in all of Christianity. All the world, even non-Christians, mostly have probably heard this said once or twice or more. It's mo it is, in my opinion, the most quoted scripture verse ever. And the reason is because in one sentence, it quantifies all of Christianity. The whole thing. And it's John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He goes on to say, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who, now pay attention, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. Let's let that sink in for a moment while you're watching this video. If you've, if you've stayed with me this far, <coughs> excuse me, this long, let that sink in. I'm sure you can look in your life and see evil men and women in your life that enjoy being evil. But Jesus is telling Nicodemus, and he's telling you, and he's telling uh, me that there's a better way. Come into the light. And he leaves Nicodemus with this line. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. In other words, if you're a righteous person, a son and daughter of God through Jesus Christ, you're not going to hide. You're going to be doing things openly because it's who you are and if somebody shines this big spotlight on you, like this spotlight behind the camera shining on me right now, you're not going to shy away from it. You're not going to hide away from it because you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. You have eternal life. So if you don't know this guy named Jesus of Nazareth and you've stayed with me this far, I commend you and I also challenge you. We're not guaranteed another breath. We're not guaranteed another heartbeat. But one thing we are guaranteed is when we call on the name of Jesus, we will be saved and we can have eternal life. You see that being born again doesn't just count after you die. It counts right now here in this life. You can be born again, renewed. You can have a new mind that is amazingly different than the narcissistic human one you were born with. But it, the only way is through Jesus. If you know this guy named Jesus, let me know in the comments how you came to know him. I'd love to hear your story. If you don't know this guy named Jesus, you can know him right now, right where you are. No matter where in the world you are watching this video, you can come to know this guy named Jesus right here, right now. All you got to do is call out to him and say, God, I'm a horrible dirtbag or some variation to that. Save me from my own depravity and evilness through your son Jesus, that his perfectness, his righteousness can be mine. That's it. That's it. If you said that right now, talking to God, and you've experienced that rebirth that Jesus tells Nicodemus about here, congratulations. Welcome to the family, man or woman. 
I'm glad you're a part. Tell me about it in the comments. If you think I am totally full of nonsense and hogwash, you can tell me that in the comments too. Okay? Either way, I want to hear from you. Also, if you don't have a home church, a local congregation that teaches the Word of God, find one. Simply walk into any church. I don't care what the name is on the door. Walk in. Listen to one sermon. The pastor talk once. You'll know it's a Bible teaching church because they're going to use the Bible. The actual Bible. And if they do, hang out there. If they don't, find another one. Because the more you know, the better off you are. And this thing called Christianity is pretty neat. It will set you apart and make you different. So just like Nicodemus was confused, if you're confused right now, I'd love to hear from you. As always, this is Timothy Holt for 90 and Out, and may God find you where you are.